you need to understand that the first church didn't go to speak with people with a copy of the New Covenant. Nothing like this. No, it didn't exist. no, it was not even in their dream. Wait few, I mean, 200, 250 years before you think about something like this. If you wanted to evangelize. Um, and you say evangelize, what do you mean? That means, if you, <laughs> all right. If you want to speak with people to tell them that the real Messiah has come, the Jewish Messiah, right. you go to Moses and the writings. Hey, didn't, Moses didn't, and the writings. Didn't Jesus do that in, in the Luke chapter Emmaus. 24 mm -hmm. on the road to Emmaus? Absolutely. Yeah. And Luke chapter 16, when the rich man in the place of torment is saying, send someone to my people, to my family. He said, come on, they have Moses and the writings. When Paul was in Rome, he didn't teach him from First Peter or the book of Revelation. What did he tell them? Moses and the writings. It was enough for all generations. Or even on, in Acts 2, when Peter preaches to the crowd, what does he turn to? He turns to Psalm 16. Uh, he turns to Psalm 110. He's, he's, he's citing uh, the passages from Scripture. He couldn't quote the New Testament. They hadn't been written yet. Written yet. So they were seeing things in the old, what we can now call the Old Covenant, yeah. in Moses yes. and the Prophets. They were seeing things. They used that, the Hebrew Bible. Exactly. Yeah. They have seen. They, they made knew, connections, they, right? They knew the symbols, okay? The symbols. They, they were masters of the symbol. Now you come and tell them the origin, the real thing is here. You went to the temple, you see the sacrifices, you see everything. Now, here is the real lamb. That's it, it's very Jewish. Until today, if you want to prove Jesus, you go to Messianic prophecies, you go to Genesis, you are going to prove that he is God from the beginning. He didn't just sprout out in the book of Matthew, here I am. And one of the beautiful things about coming here and looking and considering this is we're getting back into the context of how Jesus came how he ministered to his people, how he lived the gospel, was the gospel, communicated that to his people, and how the people who accepted it 2,000 years ago understood that as a continuing flow of what God was doing with the Jewish people. Okay, but something, you have to, something huge changed though. I mean, it wasn't just Jewish people coming into, I mean, all of a sudden now, they become known as a separate entity, right? Well, that didn't actually happen right away. It didn't happen until there was so much pressure from, on one hand, the Roman world, on to the synagogue, which for the most part wasn't accepting, and from so many Gentile believers getting in on this good thing called the gospel, that instead of a Jewish movement, it gradually became a non-Jewish movement. And then some of the anti-Jewish feelings that were in the world at the time got baptized without getting regenerated mm -hmm. yeah, and became part of the church and so a lot of the time this split in our perspective comes because we're looking at it 2,000 years later from a Gentile perspective and what we're endeavoring to do whenever we read the scriptures is to get back into the hearts, the culture, yeah, that makes sense. the minds of those people then. Looking back historically we know that God, the God of the Jewish people was doing a new thing. You can't make it sound like it just it came right in, the Jewish people came into the present and nothing new was formed. because. Something new was formed. It wasn't. Absolutely. It wasn't new because it wasn't Jewish. It was new because it was a, a new covenant. That's the thing, you know. In in the Hebrew Bible, the very thing that Menno was saying. Okay, this is what we have to look to. Jeremiah and even the the Torah promised a new covenant, and the new covenant would be a changed relationship with God. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and their sin I will remember no more. Jeremiah chapter 31. 